Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my math lesson is on parallel lines and transversals. So our objectives today are that you will identify the angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal, and you will find the measure of angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal. So here's the question I want you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson today. What pattern can you identify between the angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal? So there's a definite pattern and I want you watching for it. Some key vocabulary that I'll be using and that you need to be familiar with. Um, parallel lines are lines that always are the same distance apart and will never intersect. Make sure that you understand that this symbol right here between them is noting that any image that has these that you can assume that those are parallel lines. If those do not exist or it's not stated in the instructions of a problem that the lines are parallel, then please do not assume that. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. Often they are parallel lines. So here we have parallel lines and there's our transversal. So the pink line is intersecting both. That's a transversal forming all kinds of angles and that's what we're going to learn about today. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form right angles. So make sure that if you want to use these as right angles that it has the box in it or it has the number, the measure 90 degrees inside. If one of them is 90, then all four are then 90. Couple more. So you should have learned about vertical angles in grade seven. These are angles that are opposite of each other and are formed by intersecting lines. They are, and we know that vertical angles are congruent. So they are vertical, or sometimes we say opposite. So opposite angles, vertical angles formed by intersecting lines. The single arc means that they have the same measure. And here we have this pair of vertical angles and they have a double arc to note that they are also congruent and have the same measure. And the reason this is a single arc and this is a double arc is because they have different measures. So this is not the same measure as this. So these are the same, they're vertical and have the same measure, and these angles are vertical and have the same measure. And again, you may also hear vertical angles referred to as opposite angles. Then there's supplementary angles, which are two angles whose measures have a sum of 180 degrees, and this will become important to remember today. So again, 180 degrees forms a line, right? So from here to here is 180 degrees. And here we have this ray on our line forming the smaller angle and the larger angle. And right now we're not given any information that we can find what these angles measures are, but we know that together the sum of this angle and the sum of this angle together have a sum of 180 degrees. So now I'm gonna introduce some new vocabulary. We have corresponding angles. So anytime you have parallel lines intersected by a transversal, we have corresponding angles. And the reason that we wanna be able to identify these is that corresponding angles in a diagram like this are congruent, meaning they have equal measures. So here we go. We have this green circle is corresponding angle to this angle right here. Then we have this angle right here corresponds to this angle. So the reason these are called corresponding is they are in the same location compared to this parallel line and the transversal as the other parallel line in the transversal. So they are both above the line and to the left. So they're in corresponding locations given their line. There are two more pairs. So this is below and below on the left and below and below on the right. So again, they're in correspond they're corresponding angles and they are congruent. So above and to the left, above and to the right, below and to the right, and below and below and to the left. So remember, corresponding uh, angles are in the same location relative to each parallel line and on the same side of the transversal. So we can use this to help us find angle measures. So this is asking you to find the measures of angle one and angle two. Now given all the vocabulary I've just given you, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and take a shot at this. Can you tell me what the measures of angle one and angle two are? Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So to review, 
121 degrees, this angle right here, is a corresponding angle to angle 1. So therefore, I know that angle 1 has a measure of 121 degrees. Angles 1 and angles 2 are supplementary. So I know that 121 plus 59 degrees equals 180 degrees, and therefore, these are supplementary. So corresponding and congruent, and these are supplementary. So you could use an equation. You could say 121, which we discovered was angle 1, plus our unknown angle 2 equals 180. Subtract 121 from both sides, and we get that angle 2 is 59 degrees. All right, so now we're going to talk about interior and exterior angles. So to understand the two, next two vocabulary words and the relationships within this diagram, you need to understand what are interior angles and what are exterior angles. So interior angles are formed on the inside of the parallel lines and the transversal. So these four angles are called interior angles. Now right now I'm not going to tell you about any relationship as far as understanding what value they have, what measure. I just want you to understand when you look at this diagram that these four angles are considered interior angles because they're inside the parallel lines. Now we're going to look at exterior angles, and those are formed on the outside of parallel lines, and they will show up in green, and here they are. So there's two pairs. These are exterior, and these are exterior. All right, so we're going to take this a step further. So there's a special relationship in this diagram between alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles. So here we go. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So here we go. These are alternate interior. They're both on the inside of the parallel lines, but they're on alternate sides of the transversal. And because that is their relationship, they are congruent. So any time that you want to find, if you know the measure of this angle, then you know the measure of this angle, and your reasoning, your explanation can be that they're alternate interior angles. And we know by definition that alternate interior angles are congruent. Now there's another pair of alternate interior angles alternate sides of the transversal, and both inside the parallel lines. So these angles are congruent. Now mind you, the purple is not congruent, they're not the same as the orange. So this, these angles are congruent to each other, and the purple, alternate sides of the transversal and inside the parallel lines. Now we also have what we call alternate exterior angles, and they are also congruent. So here we go alternate sides of the transversal and exterior. They're on the outside of the parallel lines. One more pair, the green, they are on alternate sides of the transversal and on the exterior of the parallel lines and they are congruent. So now I have this diagram for you now that you've added a few more vocabulary words. I'd like to see if you can find every angle measure We've given you one. Go ahead and pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm going to give you some explanations for these. So angle two has a measure of 65 degrees because it is a corresponding angle to the given angle. So the given angle here is 65 degrees. Angle two is 65 degrees. Angle four is 65 degrees. It's an alternate ex interior angle, alternate interior to the given angle. Or once you knew angle two, you could say that angle two and angle four are congruent because they're vertical angles. And then we have angle six. Again, there are many ways to talk about angle six. Angle six is vertical to the given angle and therefore congruent. Or you could say angle six is an alternate exterior angle to angle two and therefore congruent. And yet you could say that angle six and angle four are corresponding angles and congruent. So I would accept one of those explanation, but know that there are many. Then we know that angle seven is 115 degrees. I can get this because I know that the given angle and angle seven are supplementary angles and have a sum of 180 degrees. Then I can tell you that angle five is 115 degrees 
because angles 5 and 7 are vertical and congruent, but you could have also used the fact that angles 5 and 6 are supplementary, or angle 5 and the given angle are supplementary. As we move on, I know that angle 1 corresponds to angle 5, and therefore angles 1 and 5 are congruent. I also know that angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles and congruent. And then you could also say that angles 1 and 2 are supplementary. Angles 1 and 4 are supplementary. One angle left. Angle 13 is 115 degrees. And just to review, angles 1 and 3 are vertical angles. Angles 2 and 3 are supplementary and equal 180. Angles 3 and 4 are supplementary and have a sum of 180. And angle 3 and angle 7 are corresponding angles. You could also note that angles 3 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles. So lots of relationships, lots of new vocabulary words. So here's our pattern that I originally started the lesson with the question, what pattern can you see? So if you look, there's a zigzag pattern. Kind of like a shoelace pattern. So we have vertical angles, alternate interior angles, vertical angles, vertical angles, alternate interior angles, vertical angles. So you know that when you label this diagram that you should only have two different angle measures and they should be in this alternating pattern. So your turn. I would like you to name as many pairs of corresponding angles as you possibly can from this diagram and come back and hit um, play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So angles 1 and 5 are corresponding. Angles 2 and 6 are corresponding. Angles 3 and 7 are corresponding. And angles 4 and 8 are corresponding. Did you get all four? I hope you get all four pairs. All right, now I'm going to ask you to name all the pairs of alternate interior angles that you can. Go ahead and pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we have two pairs, angles 3 and 5 and angles 4 and 6, two pairs of alternate interior angles. Can you name as many pairs as possible of alternate exterior angles? Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Let's see if you got them all. So we have angles 1 and 7, alternate sides of the transversal on the exterior of the parallel lines, and angles 2 and 8, also on alternate sides of the transversal and the exterior of the parallel lines. Now, I'd like you to try this. I'd like you to find the measure of all the angles, and every time you find one, there's seven missing angles, I'd like you to state at least one reason as to why to defend your reasoning. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm going to put this diagram up here because my numbers are going to disappear as I show you the rationale behind the measurements. So I'm going to start and I'm going to go in order. So angle 2 is 58 degrees. I said because it's supplementary to angle 1. That's all I can do right now. That's all I know if I have only have the given angle. And I'm going in order. Angle 3 has a measure of 122 degrees. There's a couple of different answers you could have given as to why. It's vertical to the angle, the given angle, angle one, and it's supplementary to angle two. Angle four has a measurement of 58 degrees. You could have said that it was vertical to angle two, or you could have said it was supplementary to angle one, or supplementary to angle three. Moving on to Angle number five, that's 122 degrees, and there's a few reasons why. It's corresponding to angle one, the given angle. It's alternate interior to angle three. 
Angle 6 has a measurement of 58 degrees. We could say this because it corresponds to angle 2. It's an alternate interior angle with angle 4, and it's supplementary to angle 5. Again, you only needed one of those explanations. Angle 7 has a measure of 122 degrees. It corresponds to angle 3. It's an alternate exterior angle to the given angle, angle 1. It is vertical to angle 5. And it's supplementary to angle 6. So together, angles 6 and 7 have a measure, a sum of their measures is 180 degrees. Last angle, angle 8 is 58 degrees. And now we have a whole bunch of reasons we can say this because we know every other angle. So angle 4 is a corresponding angle. So here we go, angle 8 and angle 4 are corresponding and have the same measure. It is an alternate exterior angle with angle 2 and therefore 58 degrees. It's vertical to angle 6, so therefore congruent and 58 degrees. And you could say that it was supplementary to angle 5 and it was supplementary to angle 7. So there you go. And you can also check your zigzag pattern, 58, and then the other way, 122. So that's my lesson today on parallel lines and transversals. I hope you had a nice review and added on some new vocabulary for yourself. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to hear more and learn more about math topics.